All right, David Harry here. And in this video, I'm going to show you the simplest way to install Phoenix OS onto your computer. And the simplest way is to use the Phoenix OS installer for Windows. So in this video, I'm going to be installing Phoenix OS into Windows 10 running in UEFI mode. Now, just a quick reminder before I get into this, anytime you alter your Windows system or the bootloader or alter anything to do with the partition system, which is exactly what we will be doing in this video, you should always have backed off your Windows system first and made an image of it somewhere else or just backed it to another disk. Now, on that basis, there will be a link on the screen right now and there'll be a couple of links in the description below taking you to some tutorials that I've done using Macrium Reflect which will allow you to do images of your Windows system. Okay so with all that said the first thing we need to do here is to download Phoenix OS so I'm going to launch Google Chrome here then I'm going to go to phoenixos.com There we go, so once we get to phoenixos.com, if we go here and click on Phoenix OS, now what we need to do is click on download. Now what we're gonna see here are a number of different download options. For the purposes of this video, we are only interested in one, and that is the executable for Windows here on the top line. There are two download links here. There's one from Google and one from Mega. That Google one, I've never found it to work. So what I'm gonna do is click on the Mega download here, and this will take us to the Mega download site where we can download the executable or the installer. And then once you get to this section, just click on download. And then what's gonna happen is the file will start downloading in the background. So as you can see, the file will start downloading at the top here. I'm gonna just fast forward through this. Okay, so with the file now downloaded, just for convenience sake, I'm gonna move it to the desktop. So I'm gonna take it from there and move it to the desktop. You can get at that file wherever your downloads folder is. I just find it's a bit easier to put it on the desktop at this point, just to move forward. And then what I will do is close down the browser now, what we need to do here is run this executable file. Now, what I've found is that if you right click over it, and then if you get run as administrator pop up here, then run it as administrator. If not, just double click it and execute it as you normally would do an executable program. But in this instance, I'm gonna do run as administrator. So just to be clear, if you don't have run as administrator, just double click the file and run it. So I'm gonna do run as administrator. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna say yes. Now we've got a few options here, install, make you disk, uninstall. We're only interested in install here. So let's click on install. It's gonna ask us where do we want to put it? Select C drive because that is our Windows disk and it will create a folder inside our Windows disk and install the files there. So click next. Then at this point, it's gonna ask us how big do we want that folder to be? Four, eight, 16 or 32 gigabytes. Well, I plan on installing like a few games into this, so I'm gonna use 32 gigabytes. I'd recommend 32 gigabytes if you have the space. If not, then select four, eight or 16. So like I say, 32 for me. Then I'm gonna click on install. Now what's gonna happen here, depending on upon like how fast your computer is the type of disk you got in and also the size of that particular data size that you've selected it could take some time so what i'm going to do here is just fast forward through this bit until it gets to the end okay so with that installation done there it's now time for us to switch down and boot into phoenix os now we can straight away click here, reboot now or remind me later. I'm just gonna click on okay for now. And the reason why is because I'm just gonna explain something quickly before I power down. 
So what's gonna happen now is when I restart or power down and switch back on, we will get two options next time it powers on, which will be Windows or Phoenix OS. Now for convenience sake, we can click on this here, which will power down for us. Let's just say yes to that. So this is gonna restart the computer for us and we should get the two options when it switches back on. So we'll see this now. There we go. Now I'm just gonna quickly gonna move here. So as we can see, there's two options, Windows and Phoenix OS. Now, anytime you power on your computer from here on in, it will automatically select Windows like that. Now, if you don't automatically click and select Windows, it will time out and it will boot into Windows anyway. So you can't kind of mess up here. It will always go into Windows. But what I'm gonna do here first off is to go into Phoenix OS. So gonna click down one, hit enter. And then this will now boot into Phoenix OS for the first time. Now, because this is the first time we're booting into Phoenix OS after the first install, this will take some time. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this. Okay, so there we are then. Now that will take a little bit of time on the very first go, but what I'm gonna do is power off and on a couple of times in a minute, just so we can see how quickly it boots in after this point. So the first thing we need to do here is to just click on here and select English United States. Then we'll click next there. Let's click accept here. Now, this will then ask us if we got any internet connections we wanna to connect to. Go ahead and connect to some stuff if that's what you need to do at this point, like Wi-Fi. For me personally, I'm just on a hardwired connection, so mine's connected anyway. So I'm gonna click Next. Now what it's gonna do is ask us to create an account. I'm not particularly bothered at this point, but you can put whatever name in you want there. Then I'm gonna click Finish. Now, this is the Phoenix desktop. So at this point, we are now into Phoenix OS this is all I'm gonna show you up to this point now because this was just to install it. This is not a tutorial on how to use it or anything, just how to install it. Now what I'm gonna do is just show you as getting back to Windows again. So if you come down here to the icon on the bottom, I'm gonna click on there, click on power. Let's do a restart. Then what's gonna happen, it will come back to those two selections again. There we go, Windows and Phoenix. So this time I'm not gonna to touch anything. And what we see, there we go, it will automatically go to Windows after a few seconds if you haven't touched anything. So I'll let this go to Windows, and then what I'm gonna do is switch it off again and then let it power back up. Okay, so there we are, back to Windows. So I'm gonna restart again this time, so I'll let it power down and power back up. But this time, what I'm gonna do is show you how quickly it boots into Phoenix now that Phoenix is completely installed. So again, it'll come back up, it'll give us two options. There we go. So we'll select the down arrow, go to Phoenix, and then hit enter. And then this time what we should see is that this will boot in a lot quicker than what it did just before, because before it was kind of like still doing its installation. So there we go, we're on the Phoenix logo there. And then that should get in, there we go, really quickly. <laughs> okay, so there we have it then. This is the simplest way to install Phoenix OS. Now, if you're interested in installing Phoenix OS through the ISO and stuff like that, check me other videos and there will be links in the description below. And if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Click on the bell notification icon and share the video as well. Anyways, the last thing that remains for me to say right now is, I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take Take care and goodbye now.